Meet Susie Q. Hi. One day, as she flushes the toilet, she wonders, Where does it all go? Traditionally, all bodily excrements get flushed down the toilet and flow through pipes straight into the nearest water body. As waste decomposes, it consumes available oxygen in the water, killing fish, amphibians, and much more. Nutrients and minerals contaminate water and reduce its ability to properly function as an ecosystem. Susie Q, your poo kills. So how can this be fixed? Conventional wastewater treatment centers remove the organic solids and noxious chemicals in our wastewater and kill pathogens using a variety of aerobic and anaerobic treatment systems. However, given the high startup and maintenance costs, constructed wetlands are an attractive alternative for wastewater treatment as they mimic natural ecosystems, support wildlife, and are less costly to maintain. A constructed wetland is an engineered ecosystem that supports wildlife while treating anthropogenic discharge such as wastewater. For the sake of educating the woefully ignorant Suzy Q, let's look at the steps of wastewater treatment via constructed wetlands. The first step is sedimentation of suspended material, usually waste particles and chemicals that have been flushed. Sedimentation is a process of suspended material settling by gravity. From here, the water moves to the wetland where the dissolved contaminants are treated. To meet water quality standards, there is a minimum of five interdependent constraints that should not be overlooked. Temperature, which is a catalyzer. pH, a function of iron activity of H+. Dissolved oxygen concentration that is plant and microbial based. Alkalinity, which is measured by its ability to neutralize acidity and the oxidation reduction potential, the tendency to gain or lose an electron. Once the water reaches the wetland, a large portion of remediation is done by soil reactions. As plants die, microbial metabolism aids in decay and breakdown of matter. There is also a rich diversity of invertebrates and vertebrates in the soil that are important to the breakdown of plant matter and detritus. This leads to the formation of organic matter that support wetland flora and fauna. Nutrient removal is important in wastewater treatment. Microorganisms such as bacteria, protozoa, and algae work both aerobically and anaerobically to remove dissolved contaminants and nutrients. For example, nitrogen removal is mainly done via nitrification and denitrification processes in which the ammonia is oxidized to nitrate by nitrifying bacteria under aerobic conditions and nitrates are broken down into nitrogen gas under anaerobic conditions. In this way, excess nitrogen levels in wastewater can be managed. Vegetation has shown the ability to facilitate the breakdown of pollutants in wastewater. Plant litter results in organic matter which is important for microbial breakdown of contaminants. Plants also provide habitat for microbes, provide oxygen in soils for aerobic reactions, and take up various nutrients. The particular species selected are less important than establishing a dense stand of vegetation because water retention, the slowing down of water velocity, is critical for wastewater treatment. Wetland efficiency can vary seasonally as changing temperatures and flow rates affect the treatment process. High flows caused by snow melt or heavy rainfall in the spring shortens residence and contact time, thus reducing wetland efficiency. Therefore, proper management should be focused during the spring when increased runoff carries a large percentage of dissolved nitrate and phosphate. Also, high flows can cause resuspension of already settled particles. During summer and fall, vegetation growth and decay allows treatment processes to occur regularly. The spring and winter scenarios present challenging conditions that affect contaminant removal efficiency. Low temperatures limit the wetland's ability to carry out temperature-sensitive reactions and therefore affect the treatment of some pollutants. Moreover, formation of ice limits water entering the wetland. Conversely, the ice sheet allows sedimentation to occur further due to reduced flows and winds. Once water quality has improved to an acceptable standard, it is removed from the wetland and can be sent to a polishing treatment plant for disinfection. This treatment can be chlorination to kill any remaining microorganisms, allowing water to be drinkable. This is unnecessary if water is disposed of in a water body such as a lake. So Suzy Q, as you can see, proper treatment of wastewater is a great way to prevent the degradation of vital ecosystem services. The frogs are happy, the fishes are happy, and you can be happy too, knowing that your poo did not kill anybody. Yay!
Bari 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 b